cloud is something that we've been talking about for, for a while now. Uh, and, and many people might have uh, thought that it's, it's something for the future, but it's actually here now and it's real. And in my presentation, I would like to share with you a couple of examples for how broadcasters are using the cloud today. So to, to get us started, let's, let's take a quick look at the big picture, because I'm going to focus on media processing and playout workloads in my presentation, but there's actually a bit more to that. And just to give you that big, big picture, let's take a look here. So in, in journalism, we are seeing the cloud being used for news monitoring, for instance. So gathering uh, all the news that are out there on the social media, on the uh, agencies, um, and all, and a variety of different uh, sources. And in, in order to keep track of those, it's actually quite powerful to have a cloud-based indexing service that aggregates all that and serves that up to journalists. For instance, the BBC are using that in their news monitoring department. Sky in the UK are using that. So there's actually quite a number of broadcasters also using the cloud, already using the cloud for news monitoring. Um, we're also seeing broadcasters using cloud-based solutions for editorial collaboration across multiple sites where uh, editors, journalists share story proposals, collaborate on developing content. And, of course, for mobile reporters who are using Skype in many cases to do interviews and to do live streaming of content from remote locations into the studio. And uh, Microsoft has actually developed a solution called Skype TX. Um, in collaboration with partners, uh, we can basically connect a Skype client to your studio so that you can feed that live on air. So that's some examples for how the cloud is helping journalists. Then there is, of course, the big topic of marketing, um, where the cloud can help you track the usage of your mobile applications and optimize the usage of mobile applications. That will be, that's what we call mobile engagement, where we are monitoring how apps are being used and uh, generate recommendations on how app usage can be um, improved. And then, of course, uh, audience response management. If you want to make your television experience interactive, want to invite your audience to participate uh, in your show, you can uh, offer, for instance, questions, do questionnaires, uh, ask people to, uh, to uh, submit questions. Uh, so this is what can be done with audience response management systems. Again, that's an area where we are leveraging the cloud to provide that. And then the fourth uh, or the third big bucket here is audience analytics. Um, you know, in the old days of broadcasting, we were broadcasting to an anonymous audience and didn't really know a lot about um, who was watching our programs. With um, um, programmatic advertising in the online world becoming the norm, uh, there is a demand for more audience insight for television and radio as well. And this is why audience analytics are becoming increasingly important for broadcasters. And this is where technologies like machine learning, like predictive analytics can be applied in order to get a better understanding of who your audience actually is. So these three areas of cloud-based applications are also part of uh, you know, the use cases. In, in this presentation today, we are going to focus on the media processing and uh, play out workflows, and you can see them highlighted in blue here. I will go through some examples uh, during the presentation, so I will, I will skip this overview here. Why are, bro are broadcasters adopting the cloud? You know, th there is some very obvious reasons, and there is some reasons you might not immediately think of. So one obviously reason is the agility. Deploying a solution on the cloud spares you the requirement of purchasing hardware, physically installing hardware, installing the software, and of course also uh, operating it. So uh, the cloud offloads a lot of those complexities and uh, speeds your time to market to uh, get your new service launched. So that's a reason for many customers, for instance NASCAR, uh, wanted to set up a new fan site and actually worked with us to launch that uh, new fan site in just three weeks from scratch, and that is really only possible uh, with, with a cloud platform that doesn't require you to go through those complex procurement processes. Another key reason for using the cloud, especially in video distribution, is the scalability. If you're broadcasting a live event and you don't know exactly how many people are going to watch, it's very good to have a platform that will scale with demand. 
And this is what uh, uh, we've been using for the Olympics Games. We've been working with NBC and many other broadcasters for several years now to do live online streaming of the Olympics events. The most recent one of obviously being the one in, in uh, Rio. And uh, just to give you an example, in the 2014 Sochi Winter Olympics, we had up to 2.1 million concurrent online viewers uh, watching the semi-final hockey game between the US and, uh, and Canada. So that's a good example for how the cloud scalability helps with uh, efficiencies. Another area is, of course, the economics. Uh, because we are running hundreds of thousands, actually millions of servers in the cloud, and because the operations are completely automated. We have huge economies of scale and can offer compute and storage services and also more advanced services at a very, very competitive price level. And that helps companies to be you know, more cost effective and to actually monetize content uh, effectively that you, know, you couldn't monetize effectively by building an on-premise platform. So NGSN, a next generation sports network in the United uh, States, a startup, that provides niche uh, transmission, uh, um, transmissions of niche sports events uh, to their audiences, have used our platform to build that with just a team of four and a, and a budget uh, in, in the low, low millions. You know, usually to, to build a broadcast station uh, and an online video platform for many hundred thousand viewers, this would be uh, much more significant investments. The third reason for adopting the cloud for many broadcasters is extending their reach beyond television. To reach your audience on IP-based devices, on smartphones, on tablets, on PCs, you need a platform that creates and, and uh, displays the content on all those different devices and caters to the specifics of those different platforms. And this is what the cloud can do for you, so you can leave the processing and the generation of the appropriate content wrappers to the cloud and play it out to those various devices. Telenet, as an example, a Liberty Global company from Belgium, are using our cloud platform to stream their content to IP-based devices, uh, while, of course, they are using their own cable infrastructure to stream to the set-top boxes. And then the, f the fifth area, and, and maybe Longer term, the most important one is that the cloud also enables transformation. The cloud enables, as we already talked about, more in-depth audience analytics, and the cloud also allows you to engage with your audience in new, exciting ways. TVB Hong Kong, for instance, have been doing that by offering um, a view engagement service and uh, audience response management system that allowed people to vote, to participate in their shows, and actually that helped them to attract younger audiences to their programming. So that's an example for how you can use the cloud to enhance your services and transform your viewer relationship. So that's some of the benefits of the cloud. Now let's take a look at some sample uh, use cases where broadcasters have used uh, the cloud to address very specific business needs. This is a customer uh, where I can't disclose the name. It's actually a customer from, uh, from Europe a uh, very large uh, broadcasting organization. Um, and what they wanted to do, they have about 40 sites uh, across Europe, and they wanted to be able to share their content across all those sites and to archive it. And they actually used Azure, our uh, cloud platform, and Store Simple, which provides an easy connectivity to their on-premise infrastructure to replicate the content into the cloud and make it, make it instantly accessible across all their sites. So that's a pretty you know, straightforward application, making use of the global presence of the cloud and allowing users to instantly access content that is produced elsewhere. That went a long way of uh, enabling collaboration between the different studios, between the different sites of that broadcaster. And it's actually not, not something very complex because the you know, integration is basically on a file system level, so you don't have to re-engineer any of your existing systems to leverage that. So that's maybe a, a very pragmatic, basic example of how you can leverage the cloud to provide global access to content. My next example is from uh, the production world. Ufa Serial Drama are Germany's largest uh, production company for uh, movies and uh, TV series. Um, and, and one of their challenges is that 
the cost pressure on producing serial drama are ever increasing. So they, they were looking for ways of getting more cost effective in producing their content. And they're using the cloud to upload the dailies, so basically the recordings, the video shoots of a day to the cloud and make that information, that uh, video content available to directors, to producers, um, to music composers and to the editors at the end of the day. And this way they are streamlining the, the workflows and reducing the time it takes to do post-production on that content dramatically. So, you know, in the old days, what they basically did is they burned DVDs and then had an overnight query deliver, deliver those DVDs to the uh, producers and directors and music composers and editors. And today they are just doing that using the cloud. And the people who are then working on that material can enter time-coded annotations to that material. And these time-coded annotations are then closing the feedback loop between the people on the set and the people in the back office doing the editing work. So that was uh, very successful. And actually, UFA Serial Drama are not right now thinking about taking it to the next level and using that cloud platform to also monetize their content in new exciting ways. Going to talk about this a little later with another example. The next example, I think, is, is something that is you know, not very obvious, but I think a very interesting and smart application of the cloud. When uh, you think about content exchange between production houses and broadcasters, um, and, and those of you who are managing production, television production, have, have certainly come across that problem, there's always those little issues with file formats, because the file formats are, don't comply 100% with the standard, or maybe they don't comply 100% with the house profile that you have defined for your use of MXF. And then you have to do manual rework. You have to reconnect with the production house or the post house to get the file generated again. And you know you can waste a lot of time and cycles uh, getting the file right. And IRT, which is the German Institute for Broadcast Technology, together with a partner called CubeTech, have developed two components. One is called the MXF Analyzer. The other is called the MXF Legalizer in order to validate standard compliance of MXF files, and if there is deviations from the, from the standard or from the profile defined for this uh, broadcaster, they can auto-correct the files. And these, this auto-correction mechanism, of course, they don't touch the e essence as such, but they will modify the wrapper and the bitstream to make it, uh, to make it uh, standards compliant and uh, profile compliant. Again, a very intelligent application in, in the cloud, greatly uh, streamlining the content exchange between production companies and uh, broadcasters. Um, as we are talking about um, uh, data and about uh, file formats, another interesting application of the cloud is the automatic generation of metadata from content. You know, probably many broadcasters have uh, 10,000, sometimes hundred thousands of hours of video footage on their shelves, some of, it, some of it documented very well, typically the news content, some of it actually not documented very well. If you want to monetize that uh, long tail content, obviously you need metadata, you need a description of what's in there, you uh, maybe need a short trailer providing an overview of that video material, you might uh, wish for a transcript of the spoken word in the video material so that you can easily find certain scenes um, you might want to recognize actors or celebrities that appear in the footage. You know, doing that manually takes a lot of work. You know, in a, in a former role uh, in a previous company, I've been working with archivists, and I learned that it takes up to 40 hours to document, to fully document one hour of footage. So this is how much manual work this requires. So this is simply not affordable if you have a 100,000 hour archive. But if you can use computers, cloud-based services to do automated metadata extraction, like for instance doing speech to text from the voice track of the video, creating a time-coded closed caption file basically that uh, has the spoken word in it, if you can recognize faces in the videos, faces of politicians, of celebrities, of actors, if you can automatically create a video summary that you can use for your catalog, that's very powerful. And this is, uh, this is what's possible today. 
Microsoft offers a set of services that are called Azure Media Analytics that can help you do this. And one of our great partners, Gray Meta, have built a solution leveraging those capabilities uh, to basically uh, manage and create the metadata for your, for your content. So that can be very, very powerful when it comes to finding relevant content and monetizing it. So this is some of the, the use cases in the, in the back office, so to speak. Uh, now let's look at uh, some use cases on the distribution side. One, if, one is, of course, to use the cloud to distribute content to new audiences. And many production companies, UFA, Serial Drama, also O3 Media, also a production house, are using the cloud to monetize their content in new ways. So they are using the online video streaming capabilities of the cloud in order to provide their audience with access to their content. Um, and you know, historically, they couldn't have afforded to uh, set up a distribution channel themselves. Th this, th this would have been too costly. But with the advent of uh, online video streaming in the cloud, that's very cost effective to do. And that's a, an effective way for them to monetize their long tail content. So all three media have been doing this with a partner called eCell TV. Uh, there's actually uh, many other uh, vendors out there offering these types of capabilities. This is what we are increasingly seeing what production companies are doing. Uh, this is an example I mentioned earlier, Telenet. Um, that's a subsidiary of Liberty Global in, in Belgium. They are distributing their television programming through a, a cable infrastructure to set up boxes. But increasingly, their customers, their subscribers, want to consume that content on mobile devices as well, on tablets, on uh, smartphones. And this is where um, cloud-based video streaming comes into play. So they are, again, using Azure Media Services and a solution provided by Delta Tree as a systems integrator to stream the uh, television uh, content, the cable content, to all those other devices. So a good example for how they can improve the service to their customers, making available their content and all those different devices. And you know, if you think about younger audiences who, who might have a preference to consume that content actually on their mobile devices rather than on the uh, big screen television, for them, that's actually very powerful. And it's important for a cable operator like Telenet to retain those younger audiences and remain attractive to those younger audiences. Then, actually, as we're here in the Netherlands, our uh, great customer, RTL, in, in the Netherlands are also using Azure Media Services for live streaming. They uh, started out, actually, with a, with a little uh, trial. Um, they have a very popular talk show talking about uh, uh, soccer games and they weren't quite sure, you know, how many people would be interested in watching that live. So they said, well, we have an existing on-premise infrastructure for video on demand, um, but we're not quite sure whether that existing infrastructure would be able to scale if we do live coverage as well. So they continue to use their on-premise infrastructure for video on demand, but edit um, Azure Media Services for live streaming of selected uh, programs. And that became very successful. And today, their solution, uh, the online video uh, live streaming solution, is part of their end-to-end -end infrastructure. And that's a good example, actually, for a hybrid approach, right? Moving to the cloud, in many cases, doesn't mean a rip and replace of what you have. But initially, it can be an extension of your existing infrastructure to maybe address scenarios, use cases, that cannot be handled by your existing on-premise infrastructure. So this is also a very straightforward business case because it saved RTL Netherlands significant investments into additional hardware infrastructure and also software development efforts. Um, with that, let me uh, get, I think this is our last example, uh, to uh, an example that I also mentioned earlier, NGSN, uh, which is a uh, startup provider of uh, sports coverage in the United States, so kind of special interest uh, sports content. Uh, they have set up a niche channel using Azure Media Services, uh, video on demand and live streaming niche channel, uh, also using uh, our platform. And for them, what was of course key is the relatively low upfront investment that is required by the cloud. So you can get this uh, up and running within just a matter of months, and it only requires a very, very small investment compared to what you would need to set up a traditional broadcast station. So I hope these, that these examples gave you a little bit of an idea of what's possible with the, with the cloud today and what the real-world use cases are. 
Um, and actually, you know, here on the, on the booth, uh, you might have uh, uh, seen that uh, our great partner Imagine Communications is actually showcasing what can be done with the cloud. There are some cameras up here that are, you know, watching us and that content is recorded and encoded live, processed uh, through Imagine Communications systems and then broadcasted back on the Imagine Communications website. So basically you can watch what's going on here on the booth uh, and uh, using Imagine Communication solutions running on the Microsoft Azure Cloud. This is a good example for live event coverage and setting that up is really, you know, with the components available today, just a matter of days, not really something that you would have to plan a year ahead or so. So let me wrap up by making a few remarks about the cloud and, and, and the cloud strategy. You know, initially when uh, the cloud was first introduced, it was more about cheap storage and uh, cheap compute power. Basically on the left side of the spectrum here, where customers were using virtual machines and, and maybe storage in order to bring down IT cost. Um, that's, that's still very relevant for reducing costs for IT, but increasingly we are seeing value-added services like, for instance, Azure Media Services or even end-to-end -end playout solutions by Imagine Communications or dynamic ad insertion solutions running on the cloud and enabling new business models, enabling new ways of connecting to the audience and monetizing your content. And uh, this is what we call the intelligent cloud. So this is, you could say, the plumbing cloud, the cloud that hopefully saves some costs in IT and also offers some additional scalability. But this is the intelligent, the transformative cloud that enables uh, new ways of doing business, that also enables what we talked about earlier, new audience insights. That's the analytics box there. What's also important if you choose a cloud is, is that cloud robust enough for your global business? And you know, there's a couple of cloud vendors out there. It is really uh, an area where uh, billions of dollars need to be invested every quarter uh, to be one of the top three players. And there's very few companies out there that can really afford that, Microsoft being one of them. And as you can see from this chart here, we have um, quite a number of very large data centers around the world. We have now availability in 24 regions worldwide. And we are also, uh, with our hundreds of access data centers, we are also very close to where your physical site is. So connectivity to your existing data centers, of course, is probably as important as the infrastructure that we are operating. And in that context, we are also very aware that the legal framework of operating cloud-based services in different countries is quite different and that your private data privacy needs and data security needs might be different from, from others. This is why we're taking that very seriously and that is why we have a lot of certifications for our cloud, cloud plat platform in the various uh, regions catering to those specific needs. And then with this last slide, I would like to, to, to leave you. I said that we think of the cloud as, as also enabling business transformation. This is why we refer to Azure as the intelligent cloud. And it's actually the, the only cloud platform that has been classified by Gartner as being in the leader's quadrant in all those four areas. So for public cloud storage services, for uh, virtualization, so this is kind of the basic stuff that we talked about, but also for infrastructure as a service and for platform as a service offering. So you will probably find other players, as you can see here, having a, um, a play in the leaders quadrant uh, as well in one of those four areas, but you will uh, only find Microsoft being a leader across all four areas. And this is, I think, also why Imagine Communications have decided to partner with Microsoft, because they understand that they need a cloud partner who has a robust cloud, who takes uh, data privacy and data security issues very seriously, and who is willing to make the investments to make that cloud a good platform for very advanced services, like, for instance, video playout and uh, video monetization. With that, I would like to thank you for your attention. Hopefully that was a little bit interesting for you. If you have any questions, I'm you know, happy to, uh, to answer any questions you might have. Any or comments are also very welcome. Please, do we have a mic somewhere? Ah, there's a mic, thank you. Could, could you describe storage a little bit more? I, I saw Microsoft Blob, B-L-O-B, I'm not sure if you say Blob or B-L-O-B storage and how that works in the cloud. So basically, you know, 
on the on the storage level you have um, in storage that is immediately available. That would be the hot storage. That's uh, the most commonly used storage. If you think about very large archives where not all the content needs to be accessible immediately, you might want to think about what they refer to as cold storage. Now, there's different offerings in the market. In Microsoft's case, we're offering two tiers of storage. Storage that is immediately accessible and storage that might take a little longer to retrieve the data from. Um, and that it's typically being used in, in archiving scenarios. Now, some um, other vendors are offering cold storage that actually might require man, many hours, sometimes even days, to access the content. We don't think that is really accessible, uh, um, acceptable. So this is why we have engineered in a way that, you know, even with cold storage, you typically have access within just a few minutes. So the delays are pretty, pretty minimal there. And then, of course, in addition to blob storage, which is the most basic storage, there's different storage technologies for data, like, for instance, for tabular data, for big data. And this is then storage technologies then that build on the base blob storage. Any other questions? If that's not the case, then I would like to thank you again.